Hello hero, it's Lucy Lanorn. Um, I'm here with your lunar reading for the period of the new Rowan moon in 2024 in Aquarius over and through the next few days as it moves through the signs and becomes a crescent. Uh, your next lunar update will of course be on the first quarter moon but if you're seeing this at any other time just know that this is a brief message uh, which may still pertain to your circumstances whenever you're seeing it because I've designed these to be timeless so I will put like in the title so sort of the the vague subject area of what we're getting at but if you're seeing it live you're seeing it as the moon is happening so tap into that good moon energy um if you can hear a scuttling a scuffling uh, some very odd noises outside i've just fed uh well i fed the small boys uh, the robins and blue tits and so forth but actually in reality i've just fed the pigeons so there is a boss fight going on on my balcony <laughs> I do apologise, they do this every morning. They're getting more and more aggressive and normally what I do is watch them while they're eating in a peaceful fashion and then as soon as one of them starts picking on another I stand up and they all go whoa, 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 and fly off. <laughs> so, sorry, that was a bit more of a Zoidberg noise than intended but hey-ho. Um, if you are new to this, to me, to the channel, hail and welcome. Uh, we're going to be using these... Caroline Miss, Caroline Mace archetype cards. I really do need to know how to pronounce that, considering how much work I've done on her books over the years. Um, we will also be using my DIY Love Oracle deck. This is not necessarily a love reading. This is just for me to get kind of colloquialisms about where we're at. These messages are also very 50-50, so they're not necessarily addressed to you. And if they say anything kind of rude, don't take it personally. It's extra information for me. All will become clear. And we will also be using the This Day I Am Oracle deck, which will just give us an activity to do over the next few days that may be useful in kind of uh, assimilating the information given. I also feel pulled to say that um, I had like a celebratory moment into the flowers the other night because I passed a, a specific part of my course that I didn't think I was going to. Um, I am a student of astrology at the moment. It's it's kind of a slog, but it's great. Um and I had a bereavement, as some of you subscribers know, and managed to boss the module anyway. So I had some flowers, I had a meal with a friend, and in my fortune cookie, there was a message for you. Good things are being said about you. I think they were being said about me, but also about you. And it reminds me to thank my new subscribers, my existing subscribers, anybody who has clicked like on anything I've done over the past however long of 100 plus videos. Please do check out the playlist in the description. Um, my donators, thank you kindly. You have got me through the winter months. Um, and also anyone who has booked with me or is booking with me currently. Again, description down below. I love you all. Um, I want to give a special acknowledgement to... Now, what's her name? Uh, new kid on the block, as far as I can tell. Uh, come on. I think it's Nosy Witch Tarot, but I'll link her in the description anyway. Her readings are fantastic and it seems like she's just started out on YouTube or this is a new channel for her. So um, yeah, please do check her out. Amazing work. I was uh, quite astonished and enthralled. And she goes at my kind of pace as well, you know, deep dives, longer readings, etc. as far as I can... Uh, work out <laughs> sorry brain just did a complete brain fart then because the aforementioned pigeons were doing like a shadow puppet thing on my wall and the aggression of it was very candy man <laughs> i can't even i wish you could see it guys it's very odd anyway right so let's get an overall mood shall we for this next few days we we have an overall mood apparently so companion and samaritan together and both in the upright, so we've got loyalty, tenacity and unselfishness, along with refined your capacity to help those you would prefer to ignore. This is already a level up from some of the energies that we were finding last month now. Um, there's also possibly a channeled message coming through to do with the fact that Aquarius is the natural ruler of the 11th, and the 11th is to do with connections, to do with friendships, and I got a bit of a, a guidance about that as I was waking up this morning, so... Um, that'll come through kind of when it's appropriate, but there is already a clear kind of channel of messages going on. I feel like this one as well. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
So we're getting more cards than usual, but actually that figures because my deck of choice in terms of tarot slash cartomancy is actually my Jim Henson mega deck of Dark Crystal and Labyrinth playing cards, which I really like tarot. So that takes up less space and makes everything work out perfectly. Let's get our activity. I feel like it's this blue one. Turning on aeroplane mode. Take on the day without your phone. Tap that little aeroplane icon or leave your phone behind and focus on the world around you. Amazing. Right. That does fit in as well. Um, I know that New Year is generally about assessment, but I do feel like there is a reassessment going on with you as regards your social circle, the influences around you and how you feel that ties into your overall values and kind of greater mission, shall we say, which is also arguably quite an Aquarian mood because they are very um, philosophical, humanitarian, forward thinking, sometimes technological, etc, etc. So an Aquarian moon speaks to needs to do with those kinds of things as well as to do with the broader network. Let's get into it. It may not be a friendship reading, guys, but these things are coming through as additional info anyway. Okay, so four of cups with Jen choosing his shard. This one wants to come. Knight of Cups with Jareth in reverse. Hi, guys, I'm so annoyed. I'm sorry. I just filmed your entire reading and realised that at the point that you last saw, there'd been a software update on my phone which interrupted it and just basically erased the entire thing. I believe it was absolutely the right message and I actually ended up talking for about 45 minutes, so little bit gutted that it's gone, particularly as my throat was catching because it, it's a lot of expressing energy. Um, but <laughs> we're going to try and reiterate and I'm doing so sort of continuing this theme that we talked about of things being lighter, brighter, easier, right? Because actually the sunlight in my room has increased um, while we've had that break. As I was delivering the reading the first time round, Things were fairly great and now they're a bit bright and shiny. So let's get into it and I'll see if I can provide a more succinct version than I just did. Um, I'm going to quickly go over the cards um, just in case I haven't. And if I have, I will cut out either this or the bit before where I did. Um, so we've got Companion in the Light, Loyalty, Tenacity and Unselfishness. Samaritan in the Light, Refines Your Capacity to Help Those You Would Prefer to Ignore. Then we've got, I'm doing all this to impress you, did it work? I'll always be here for you if you need me and you inspire me creatively. And then turning on aeroplane mode, a clarifier overall of the seven of wands. And then we've got a four of cups, a knight of cups and an eight of cups reversed. Sorry, the knight of cups is also reversed. Then we have a eight of cups, a four of pentacles reversed and nine of, of cups reversed. A two of pentacles, a four of pentacles in the upright and a ten of cups in the upright. We also have my fortune cookie message. And again, I can't remember whether I said anything about this in the beginning, but it was good things are being said about you. Um, so that is true for you now and also pertains to what we spoke about here. I'm going to take a sip of water and begin. Two seconds. Blimey, that was a lot of talking for no result. I feel that may even be part of the reason why this has happened, right? Maybe there's been a lot of talking, a lot of communication, a lot of attempting to repair certain relationships with little result. Um, the first thing I want to say about how we kind of came to this is that even without the cards, and again, I'm sorry if I'm reiterating from before or if there's choppy editing, but I woke up to a channel message this morning that I knew wasn't particularly for me. And it was the question for sp from spirit of, excuse me, I need to calm down because I've, <laughs> I've just been talking for a long time. It was the question from spirit. If the people around you who are around you currently, as you're watching this, whenever you're seeing it, were the only people you get for the rest of your life. If bridges that you've burnt were not able to be rebuilt, if 
the not so great influences around you were always with you and if the great influences around you were with you to the end of your days how would you feel would you be happy with that <laughs> would you be delighted at where you've come to socially and in terms of your um network you know socially sexually familiarly in the workplace um and other right also how would you best use those resources? And I don't want to be transactional and refer to people as resources, but let's admit that when you're in a network, there are certain things you gain from it and certain things that are in other areas, right? Um, so how would you carry forward what it is that you have right here, right now, in the best possible way? Are the people you would distance from within that circle that you've chosen for yourself that you have right here, right now, today? Are there people who are outside of that current circle that actually you would long to be able to talk to again? Are there people within the group who you think you are fantastic and I either haven't tapped into just how fantastic you could be for these realms or I haven't given back to you in the same way, considering how fantastic you are. These are all the things that you're considering in this Aquarius moon and in the sort of beginning of the Rowan period. And these are all things that are perfectly reflected in your cards. Excuse me. Hiccups for confirmation. So I am giving the same reading twice, but hopefully um, in a way that makes better sense the second time round, because I think the first time I struggled a bit as well. Now, I know that connections aren't that simple. We're not on a binary, nor are we going to keep the same things for the rest of our lives in our lives. Um, and that can play out quite literally. I mean, I've had people that I was very close to, fell out of touch with for a period of a few months. And when I kind of toddled back to see what they were up to that week, they were no longer there. I'm sure some of you have had those experiences for which I'm very sorry. Um, equally, there are people that I never anticipated in my entire life meeting because I thought that their particular combination of characteristics was something you only saw in movies, was an impossibility, was something you just don't get IRL from my humble beginnings, right? And those people have indeed turned up and flourished. <laughs> um, I think there's something in this that says... We're not asking you to believe that you will carry your existing group till the end of your time here in this life. What we are asking you to do is examine whether the choice you're making socially within each moment is a choice that you would be happy with for the rest of your moments, right? For some of you, this is a slap on the wrist. For others of you, it's an affirmation that actually you are far more content with the people in your life than you ever thought possible and that your focus needs to be redirected towards that appreciation. Okay. How do I start this again, guys? Let's start with turning on aeroplane mode and, and what I had to say there. Um, I've been reading a book about pacing. It's the first self-help book that I've ever read that is written by another disabled person, which, jaw on the floor, right? <laughs> You'd think it happens more often considering how much we're used as inspiration bait for the Ables. But it has been utterly transformative purely because it is written by somebody who cannot operate under the normal kind of Tim Robbins rules. And that's, that's no shade on Tim Robbins. It's just... Um, the existing paradigms for getting ahead in life, or even for what that means, are not accessible to all. And this book, Pace Yourself by Amy Arthur, not sponsored, just love it, is the first thing I've come across that asks me to evaluate my life on my own terms in the same way that my spirituality does, and also gives me helpful suggestions on how to get the most out of it without forcing me into a mould that I can no longer physically or cognitively achieve. In that book, she speaks a lot about emotional pacing and emotional burnout. 
she focuses a lot on relationships and she makes little suggestions that actually um, speak to much broader themes that I had last year around everything from how I conduct myself sexually to why at one point I was getting social agoraphobia, which completely isn't like me, um, to like who I invest my time and energy in, who I don't, how much I invest, how much I feel able to invest, how I might be letting people down in that sense, yada, yada, yada. If any of these themes speak to stuff you've been dealing with, this one is for you, my dude. And if not, just, you know, hear me out because we're getting somewhere. This turning on aeroplane mode, I think, speaks to a cycle that she described in the emotional energy portion of the book, where sometimes if you are emotionally exhausted by something that's more long term or by a traumatic event or by something you've kind of carried through with you because it's unavoidable, you know, it's, it's kind of something you're still healing. What can happen is that you distance a little too much socially because you learn that social investment is always too high. If you've been around people that make you tired in whatever way, good or bad, right, that are very high energy in some fashion, you kind of internalise that everybody is going to be high energy, that everything is going to drain you or tire you out, that the sun only comes in sections and that you need to moderate your activity so that you can be enough for people. You almost develop a sense socially that everybody else's battery is a little bit bigger than yours. And instead of trying to speak about that anomaly with others in a, a peaceful way, you either use it as justification to ghost them for long periods, as I did and as many people I interact with do, um, or you kind of um, shame yourself, demonise yourself, have a guilt thing going on about what it is that you feel you can give once your other resources are spent. That's particularly true of those who use a lot of mental energy, spiritual energy, you know, psychic energy or physical energy in their profession and then come home. And it's kind of like the last thing you want to do is over invest in an interaction that, you know, will be tiring when you already feel tired. But what she speaks about is that with underuse of emotional resources because of, for example, dissociation from a traumatic interaction, um, what you get to is a point where you imagine everything to be an overinvestment, even if it won't be. And I think for some of you, this rings particularly true. And I think explaining it in that way is maybe why I had to do this reading again. I think you are doing things socially over again. I think that's coming through. Um, so if you do think of social interaction as something which is desirable, but which you don't have the energy for at the moment, whenever you're seeing this, it's your wake up call, confirmation down below, um, that this is the time to put into your energy pacing in a broader sense and to relearn what it is that actually tires you out, where your boundaries actually are, etc., my ascendant is where the moon is right now. And in the reading that I did, which has now been cancelled, <laughs> um, I spoke a lot about descendant energy. And I know I've mentioned it before on the channel. Descendant energy is the thing that you most often interact with in other people that you see as other than yourself, i.e. not your ascendancy energy. So it's the it's the uh, zodiacal opposite, or if you're not down with that paradigm, it's just kind of the opposite vibe of whatever you present as. And present is a big word on that because it is the ascendant, not the sun. Um, but in a sense, it's like you come into contact with people who, for whatever reason, come across as exactly what you're not. And this can be in a really positive way where you meet people who you consider a Samaritan, a companion, because on some deep level, you don't think you can be that for other people. So you're seeking it in the wider world. Or it can happen in the other way where you meet people that you consider to be bad mouthers or um, to have narcissistic traits or anything like that, because actually 
These are things within your shadow self that you have yet to heal. You might be someone who bad mouths others. You might be someone who is less than a Samaritan around other people. And so it's important for you to meet other people who are actively nasty <laughs> so that you can see that playing out and go, oh shit, there's some work to be done there, right? And in healing the descendancy energy, over time you learn that actually your projection your othering into the outside world of this is what I am not is actually more of a part of you. It's all on an axis more than you think. So in friendships or relationships or challenging connections that are really difficult where you want to mouth off in the comments about how much you hate the person and how actually you're nothing like them because you would never do X, Y, Z. These things, you know, from a I hate misusing the K word, but from a karmic perspective, from a, a fated perspective, to the extent that you believe in fate, are invited in by you so that you can recognise certain energies within yourself to be healed. And in the same way, um, if you think that you are somebody who cannot invest the time, the energy, who is too burnt out for the relationships that you are nonetheless kind of interacting with on whatever level, but you desire these qualities in yourself, you wish you were more like whoever, those relationships are often there to show you that you are like that, that without you being like that, this person or these people couldn't have come into your worldview, right? Um, there's something going on with that with you that is tying up the social cycles that were present in 2023. And this whole reading from Jen over here choosing his shard to Jen right over here kind of having healed the crystal or coming into the chamber is speaking about culmination of energy simultaneous to new energy flourishing. Or as Aura would say, Aura, sorry, um, it's the end of the world or the beginning, right? And the beginning would be a better way of saying that. As I described before, this is a very shoegazy, very blendy, very Venn diagramming kind of a reading. There's lots of themes bleeding into each other over and over, under, sorry, an overarching umbrella of connections. Um, it's very dissolvy. It's very, um, it makes me think, if you haven't seen my A to Z Lucky Dip playlist, where we pick a word out of a hat and do various types of readings on it, it makes me think of like the ink in water type readings I've been doing there and other things that are a bit more ephemeral in the way of augury and a bit more abstract and taking those abstract notions and pulling them into the physical. So where I said before that we were sort of more cyclical, more straightforward this time round, we're not diving down into the plutonic, we're going in a linear, horizontal fashion through the cards. I also mean that even though we're moving in a linear way, we're not doing a deep dive because everything's kind of a blend. Anything that was on the internal is manifesting on the external in a really interesting way. And it's also a time where we're not demonising the forces on the external that we're seeing as other or antithesis to self or what I don't want to be or what I am not. We're instead going, oh, that's interesting. Isn't it funny that you should turn up? Because I've been wanting to work on X and in somebody else I'm seeing Y, right? It's a, it's a sense of getting out of blame including self-blame if you don't always have the energy to invest as much in your connections as you would like to. 2024, broadly, I'm making a big statement here, but it's going to be a year for you of new connections, new circles, new um, people influencing what it is that you were doing before anyway, in a kind of way that's um, speaking back to the growth of the self. And not just kind of, oh, yes, I learned a valuable lesson and I'm going to stay away from this person. But in a sense of if somebody is, as the question suggested, around for the rest of your days, what are they continuously teaching you? If you couldn't step away from toxicity in that way that we often talk about on this channel, if you couldn't do a banishing, what would you do instead? Right? <laughs> if... Um, if all of the problematic elements of last year, as well as the good ones, were with you for the rest of your days, 
how would you reframe your own emotional energy levels and manage those throughout your weeks or months to be able to deal adequately with that, knowing that it can't be just gotten rid of, right? We often speak about banishings, cleansings, return to senders, sending energy back to where it came from, releasing it once we've learned a valuable lesson. This is all very much based in a problem solution paradigm. And the structure and the content of this particular reading is asking you to level up from that, to go beyond, to say, not everything is a straightforward question with a straightforward answer. Not everything is actually linear, even though your progression through the next few days may feel that way. It's asking you if certain things were like weirdly non-negotiable, if certain magics were upon the land, if you were indeed trapped in your own kind of a labyrinth, socially speaking, how would you navigate? Because it's no longer an environment where you can choose who stays or who goes, or because it's no longer an environment where you can fall back on things that you have previously cut out. That doesn't mean if you came for a reconciliation reading that that's not going to happen for you. What it is, is a kind of intellectual exercise, um, a thought experiment of if nothing was changing from where you've just left it, what would you do next? How would you adapt? Right. You might distance from certain people. That might be an option. But if you couldn't cut them out altogether, if you couldn't negate their influence at all, is there a way that you could cope with whatever they're doing? You know, be it abusive, be it gaslighting, be it talking shit about other people, be it giving you false advice, worlds of illusion with Jareth in reverse. I've turned this world upside down and I've done it all for you. Be it guilt trips, right? I've done it all for you. Um, professions of love under actions that are anything but. If you couldn't actually expunge those energies, if there's no way to power of Christ compels you back to where they came from, what would you do? How would you negotiate those? What kind of ways, excuse me, hiccups, confirmation, would you conduct yourself in to ensure that actually those things didn't take centre stage and instead the shard that is glowing by itself is the one that you carry forward. This is also a period, by the way, in that kind of dissolving shoegazy energy of letting what is known come to the fore instead of trying to seek and find out. Um, again, if you are a seeker, <laughs> that's sometimes an instinct that you have that seems very... Um, there is a, a way of relating that seems very counter to it, right? It seems very... How am I... Spirit, speak through me. How am I trying to say this? Um, it seems counterintuitive to the way that you might operate if you are very based in acquiring knowledge, skill sets and or behaviours in order to up-level and progress to the next thing. Again, linear, linear, linear. <laughs> you might have strong Virgo or the kind of inventor end of Pisces or something that's very like engineering-y and like, yes, we do this, then we do this, then we do this, then we do this. And whilst that's lovely... Um, it doesn't always work like that, right? This is a very kind of Neptunian spread for various reasons that I won't go into. You're being asked to sit back on your haunches and wait for what is true for you to start glowing because it will do so undeniably. It will be an irreversible process. And from that, you will know how to act. But sometimes it's a case of not deciding the actions before you do them, just maybe pondering the questions. Namely, the question that I began with, which is, you know, if you only had this set of people for the rest of your life, what's your next move? Doesn't mean that you can't step back from people. Doesn't mean that you can't gain new people. In fact, there's certainly indication in the cards for some of you that you will very much gain new people within the next few days. But it's instead a mechanism by which you find out what is glowing for you. What is the true, the right way? What refines your capacity to help those who you would prefer to ignore, to banish, to cast out, to strip of their privileges, right? Chamberlain. Um, and it's kind of, you know, you're looking for loyalty, tenacity and unselfishness in your companions. 
But in order to learn those things for yourself, sometimes you have to put up with stuff that isn't ideal. Sometimes you have to be around disloyalty in a loyal way <laughs> or be around flaky people in a tenacious way or selfish people in an unselfish way to learn to give those skills back. Now we have the four of pentacles twice, once in the flippity dippity and once in the upright and right feeling. That tells me that you are exploring what it is that you've kept to yourself out of fear of not having enough versus what it is that you can give back. It's also related to the crystal chamber, to stepping into your eventual purpose, your spiritual purpose, your right mind, your right tribe. That may be something that happens over the next few days in terms of encountering people who are um, either new or coming back, who are uniquely positioned to assist you through the next stretch, whether that's inspiring you, assisting you, supporting you, impressing you, being impressed by you, you name it, it's a general reading for a large audience, right? It will fit differently for different people. But what I can tell you is that you're stepping into an environment where you are around your people and it will be obvious to those people what you have brought in with you. Does that make sense? <laughs> I want you to think of your future interactions and future companionships as a kind of Zoom room where you're on live with whoever it is that you would ideally seek out, your best buddy, your magical Ludo type friend, or indeed your perfect partner and family situation, as seen in this Eight of Cups, right? And while you're in this Zoom room, your Zoom background is everybody you're currently interacting with. <laughs> does, does that change the dynamic? Does that mean that before you even start chatting, there are a few apologies or excuses or reservations to make, right? It's not just about this notion of the five people closest to you and being defined by the people you're around and all that sort of good stuff. It's also about being in a group in your existing life that demonstrate your whole personality, that are a kind of extended zodiacal configuration for you. And understanding that that comes across to other people, that you are represented by the circles through which you move. That's not me damning you. If you're around people that you're actually like, shit, well, this person does nothing but badmouth everyone and this one is like in dodgy parasitic sexual energies where they're making soul ties and, and this one is like in poverty mindset and I want to be rich and, and this one like does nothing but chastise me and I don't know how to get away from them and set boundaries. It's not that, right? Because all of those, again, are accusations based on what these other people might be like. And we're not looking to condemn other people in this reading. We're looking to be a Samaritan and to help those we might prefer to ignore. We're instead saying, in the picture of the people that you're around at the moment, what does each one say about you? <laughs> How did you come to all of these people? And if they're all fantastic... If everybody in your life, you are happy to carry through to the end of your days. If they're all companions, if they're all good Samaritans in the true way and not the performative way. And if they have the capacity to help you help themselves and help others and everything's fine and groovy and really creative and inspirational. Then this is your congratulation reading to say, listen, your Zoom background, oof, top notch, absolutely perfect, right? well done but also in an equal way to say and this person reflects my such and such ascendant and this person reflects that i have this planet in this place or in non-astrological language this person came to me because i am also really funny or this person is a wonderful force of good in my life because we do this humanitarian work together. Or this person is endlessly nurturing and I know that I drew them in because actually in me, I am a mother or a father figure for other people. I am a guide and nurturer. I nourish others, right? 
There is all this informational feedback, whether you feel positively or negatively, about the crowd that you stepped into 2024 with. And that includes anybody sort of peripheral to you right now. You know, somebody you've only known a couple of days. Are you happy for them to be in your Zoom background? <laughs> it also applies to those people that you maybe haven't been in touch with for a long time, but you know you have deep connections to, deep bonds with, and who you wish you spoke to more, but they're in your life, right? So in this case of like the spirit asking you, like, what would you do in terms of carrying all of them forward? Well, I guess your glowing first thing would be like, you know, I've known so-and-so since school and they're a fantastic egg, but I don't think I've actually spoken to them in any way other than a Facebook like for five years, ten years. So I'm going to hit them up and I'm going to say, do you want to meet up in real life? Things like that, right? Also, in your Zoom picture, and this will hit for those who came for a love reading, <laughs> is there anyone missing? Is there anyone that you would like to be in your backdrop that has been glowing out to you, that has been coming forward in your mind, in your dreams, in song references, in your subconscious, etc., that you know should be a part of this picture, but they're not in the class portrait, right? They're not in your backdrop for whatever reason. Because the beginning of 2024, and particularly Rowan season, is going to be about pulling them back into the picture and maybe having them stand in front of some of the influences which you're not going to ignore right now and you're not going to call external, right? But you're also like realising that you should distance from a bit, realising that you don't want to be like them. There is someone significant for you and I feel I should touch on it, although I don't want to dwell on it, who has been making up a world of illusion to sustain a relationship with you. Um, I was hearing Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. And I feel this person, if they're not romantically attracted to you, there is certainly a large investment from them for whatever emotional reason in keeping you around to an extent that perhaps someone at a healthy distance might call codependence. And remember that that can take financial forms. It can take sexual forms. It doesn't have to be emotional in the sense of being super lovey-dovey all the time. It can be a codependency of another kind. Perhaps they depend upon your good reputation because they're building up theirs. Perhaps they depend upon your attention because that's something they're continually seeking from other sources and never quite getting in the way that you give in a sustained fashion. Whatever this is, this dynamic between you, right? And they're represented twice here, both by the Chamberlain and by Jareth in reverse. I feel that with this being in reverse and with the overall theme, this is the end of the Labyrinth movie. This is where the entire world of illusion that has been constructed to keep someone in a specific situation is actually starting to break down because someone said, I don't think you have power over me. And that rocked this person's world, even if it was just suggested, right? There's a really specific message for some of you, just a minority, that this person may have found out somehow that you are not their central, that, sorry, they are not your central focus, or that indeed there are other people equally important to you in a romantic sense or a friendship sense, and that that has sent them into some kind of betrayal cycle with Hoggle in reverse and with him giving up Sarah to Jareth, or some kind of spiralling in the sense of Chamberlain, right? Playing both sides, screeching, um, kind of, performatively running around the castle with proclamations of what's going to happen. Um, and I think that whether or not that specific situation hits, you've certainly been around somebody for whom their paradigm is that relationships are competitive, that they are transactional, that they are based on um, what assets you can give to another person so if there's anybody else that is giving you assets that they feel they can't, they get very um, action-oriented about that, right? And that can range, depending on who's viewing, from 
copycat stuff, to magical attack, to stealing of money or resources, to actively cheating on you so that you know how important they are, to um, sort of being demonstrative about pulling down this other person in a public or a social way, bad mouthing, bad mouthing you, right? Um, there's lots of things going on here, but I suspect that they're going on simultaneous to a world of illusion that is giving, that is a good Samaritan, that is sweet, that is professing whatever kind of feelings for you, depending on the nature of the dynamic, and that is very much like demonstrative, performative. I am with you. I have got your back. You are on public, right? Even if you guys have either parted ways or it's been a bit rocky or you're sort of starting to see that this isn't for you. I get the sense that there is a performative element of, oh no, we're companions, right? And this may even be directed at whoever or whatever is seen as a threat. For others of you, again, minority, this is speaking to the larger illusion operating in the world right now. This is the, the castle of illusion sort of made up by things like advertising, word choices in stuff like, I dare say, YouTube ads or things you're seeing as you're scrolling through social media, things that are sponsored at an unseen level, things that are being suggested rather than said, kind of neuro-linguistic programming slash sigillic advertising territory. You are starting to come to terms with those illusions and in coming to terms with them, you are silently saying you have no power over me and the entire structure of the labyrinth is breaking down and the, the response is a kind of screeching, a kind of dissonance, a kind of, well, we don't know what to do with you algorithmically, so let's just create chaos, right? There is a throwing toys out of the pram energy with whatever or whoever this is of like, it's a very, if I can't have you, no one can. Um, but it's also very like, please pay attention to me. <laughs> and I do, I feel sad for Jareth, but I also feel that there is like a guilt trip involved in this of, okay, so you're seeing that my efforts were actually all illusion and that it was pretty shady but I'm going to make you feel guilty because I did all this illusion for you. And your task, if this, this bit is resonating, is to say, building a castle of illusion for me is not something I wanted you to do. It's not a kind thing to do. It's not a companionable thing to do. Nor is it loyal, nor is it patient and tenacious, nor is it unselfish, right? It may be an extremely... Um, complex act of theatricality and ritual but it was also an act of selfishness in some way I feel bad for this person or thing because genuinely with them being in Jareth energy their belief was that they couldn't have you without that world of illusion they couldn't keep you without the lie right or the series of lies but the thing to realize about that is that you don't want to be kept in lying and I think they haven't quite got to the place yet bless them where they understand that actually truly standing by you truly loving you truly being your companion or Samaritan even truly being a good colleague a good family member whatever means that they don't do things to keep you they don't fool you in order to have you around they don't lie on your name they don't say one thing to one person and one thing to another, whether it's about you or someone else. Because they trust that they can give you what they can and that you will do the best for you. And that's as much as, as is possible and as much as is reasonable if we're approaching relationships from an unselfish perspective. Always look, my dudes, for the people that are prepared to let you go because they're the ones you want to keep, right? Because genuinely, they have your future in mind. <laughs> Does that make sense? I feel that there's somebody who's been scrabbling so much to have you around that they've turned into, I want to say a figure of toxicity for you, but again, I'll, I reference back to this descendant energy of like, how much does that reflect the toxicity that you've been perpetuating in your own um 
less dramatic behaviours, right? Are you are you well? Are you speaking of others well? Are you thinking of others well? Are you treating everybody as you would wish to be treated? Or are you being strategic, competitive, um, transactional? Um, are you telling little white lies? Are you like blocking off to conserve energy instead of being genuine, right? Um, there's something going on here with you learning all about that and all about yourself with this. But there's also kind of a lesson for them, which sadly I feel they may get to long after you guys have, excuse me, confirmation, either parted ways or turned it down from 11 to maybe two, <laughs> um, where they realise that actually like in their loving way of, of trying to keep you out of love, they they did the least loving shit that they could pull, right? And that that's not something which you will or indeed should stand for any any longer. So, again, I don't want to dwell on it because what we're trying to do is be less in the energy that has come up in, in previous lunars of like, this person is circumstantially doing this thing to you and you need to do this about it. And less in defensiveness because of this seven of uh, rods qualifier. You know, you're not... You don't need to hit people if you're already on the high ground, if you think of the original Smith Waite depiction. But also like realising that this person is also a part of you, treating them with kindness, even if they're someone you would rather ignore, and maintaining enough distance that you can see what glows. Jen is not catapulting the crystal that is not correct for him off into the depths of the... Um, orrery in the rest of the room he's instead putting it back on the ground and waiting for the one which glows to come forward there is an acceptance involvement in this where your energy is shifting from a kind of magical defense against the way that a person has been treating you even if that treatment is heinous i'm so sorry if it is but you're shifting into a mindset of i have done what i can I have expressed what I can about the fact that this is dog shit <laughs> and I am now going to just shift my focus and not be in an energy of retaliation, not badmouth them for badmouthing me, not tell everybody what they did, not try to make them feel as I felt, etc, 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 because I recognise that this person was exhibiting parts of me back to myself or at least showing me where I don't have firm boundaries or where I am taken in by illusion in the first place. You know, advertising works because if an ad for better help tells us subconsciously that we would be a burden on others if we talk to anyone but a therapist, we agree with that. So we pay for therapy. I'm not, I'm not saying don't pay for therapy if you need it, my dudes. And I'm not qualified to give medical advice, nor am I legally giving you anything here except for entertainment. But you see what I'm getting at here, don't you? Right? There are suggestions in things that only work if on some level you agree with that suggestion. If somebody told you that they, you, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Let me just really back into my throat chakra, thank you. There are suggestions here from a person that you are broken enough, that this is all you can expect. And if you didn't agree with that, it wouldn't work, right? There are suggestions from them that for you to say no to whatever they've been doing would be an unreasonable boundary and that you should feel guilty about it. And that wouldn't work if you didn't agree with it again. So the reason we're looking into this energy is to understand those things, not to get back at this person, not to protect yourself, to shield yourself, because frankly, from the rest of your cards, I think that they're like, I think the punitive element from the universe is actually going to be just your success, particularly socially and romantically. But what we're instead doing, instead of looking for the punitive element, is looking for how this happened how you can prevent it by um, preserving your own energies and 
how you can be compassionate towards this person and be a genuine Samaritan instead of a performed one, a genuine companion instead of a performed one by saying, hey, listen, I don't think you're right for me, but this is the way that I can show you kindness. Or this is the extent that I can hold back as a dignified person and not drag you through the dirt because of how I feel. It is a higher ground thing, right? <laughs> you have to be Kenobi. <laughs> and moving past that into this Eight of Cups reverse, you'll notice that we have this Jen Kira Fizz gig, happy family picturesque thing in the flippity dippity. And we also have a card about walking away emotionally from a situation that came across as very sweet, but actually wasn't, right? An offering that wasn't. So in stepping away from this person, group of people or set of influences, I think you're coming to a reassessment about what it is that you want from relationships in a broad sense. I think that if you've been somebody who was very attached to the idea of happy family, um, paper-backed marriage, 2.4 children, house in suburbia with two garages, and this person maybe represented that for you or showed you what comes of that, you are now reassessing and saying, you know what, I want to be more fluid with that picture. I want to incorporate more things that are important to me. Or I want to redefine boundaries that are based on my set of values and not other people's. Conversely, if this person, group of people or thing perhaps represents um, a life that is more free flowing, more Piscean, more Venn diagrammy, more... Um, Everybody is sacred, so let's fuck everything and let's all have multiple partners and let's be freewheeling. Just an example. This may be a time that you come to the realisation that actually, you know, I think I'm a person who wanted a family. And I'm not sure that that's possible to the traditional extent within that kind of a community. And I think the, the, the things I may have surrounded myself with have been a bit toxic. So perhaps I can come to a compromise between these two worlds. These are just relationship examples because when we go to the romantic and the sexual, it's very stark, right? It's very easy to see what I mean there by a reevaluation of ideals. But this could apply equally in how you relate to colleagues, how you relate to a given family rather than chosen family, how you relate to your friendships, what you want out of your circles, what you give to your circles, right? Are you a family member to these people or are you fist gig sort of crying out wanting to be fed and nothing much more? Bless him. It's, it's this kind of reassessment of self-companionship through realising how you can best be a Samaritan to others and realising how the dynamic that you've brought forward as your Zoom background, <laughs> cosmically, is a picture of where you've put yourself. Do you want to change that picture this year or are you happy with it? And how does that relate to the sorts of people that you've attracted in, the good ones and the ones that are a bit trickier? Right. And I say tricky rather than bad because tricksters come in to trick you into a new paradigm. They come in to show you that this way isn't correct, but also this way isn't correct. They're a neither neither figure. They step in and out of our lives so that we can get greater wisdom on something which without them would have been unclarified. And for that reason, we should be kind to them. We should be thankful. You know, it's going back to this pray for those who persecute you, which I know a lot of people don't like. And when I say that, I'm saying it as someone who's dealt with 36 years of covert narcissism, which is still ongoing, which prevented me from seeing a dying family member recently. I'm saying it as someone who's had recent magical attack from a potential romantic rival and sent it back, right? I'm saying it as someone who's very versed in magical defense. I'm saying it as someone who's had problematic friendships, people I call best friends coming from my business, from my love life, out of attention jealousy, right? All of these kinds of things, like I'm not, I'm not ignoring your pain is what I'm saying, right? I'm coming from a similar place to you, but I'm also saying all of those experiences were feedback about what I was doing. And in the same way, whatever this is for you is feedback about how you've been operating, whether that's in terms of how you erect boundaries. Boundary set a reading coming up, by the way. Uh, subscribe if you're interested. 
or whether it's more sort of loosely about characteristics that you have in the shadow which you have projected into external forces in the world. Are there people doing things to you that you can see yourself doing socially with the people who won't say anything or in the environments where nobody's watching? Because he sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. <laughs> Right. And I, I, you know, I've mentioned the Christian God here with the last quote, but also that comes back to that kind of vengeful Santa-ish Saturnalia kind of a God where it's like there is a not a punitive element from the universe, but certainly a, an element of like there isn't a time where you can turn off universal experience, you know, so we do know that you said that thing or we do know that you hit up that person and maybe had a sneaky side thing. And we do know that you like maybe told a white lie about your business and that this is the consequence socially and all of these other things. And it's not to say that you can't be forgiven and that you can't be treated in a beautiful way by the universe. It's just to say that nothing is ignored and everything filters back in to why this shit happened in the first place. So in your reassessment of what it is that you do desire, what inspires you, what would genuinely support you and what impresses you in other people the most, or indeed how you can switch into being around people that are impressive to you at a deep level, you're also kind of incorporating all of this new self-knowledge stuff. And if you're not um, a subscriber who's also hit the bell, i.e. you don't get community notifications, do that now if this is resonating because I'm going to link a love reading from Jess... Um, is it Jess Pocket? The, the Chaos Witch. Um, that was absolutely fantastic this morning on affiliated subjects. It totally resonated for me, but it may hit home for some of you as well because it does pertain to this stuff and... Also to letting it go if it's been something that's been going on for a while. I know in my life there's been a cycle since about October where I'm grappling with this kind of thing. And, you know, for many of you watching, there has been a cycle all through last year of us having uh, readings that are a bit socially difficult or pertain to acts of malice or jealousy or weirdness from other people around you because of your elevation, because of your successes. And because of the time that you are willing to put into them, right? Um, all of this is relating back. So do um, do subscribe if you're not and hit the bell if you're not to see that extra content as well. Okay, moving into the next row. Um, we have covered this sort of givey receivey, how much you're giving back, how much do you pace yourself in order to give back type energy. But I also feel like there's something here about somebody new coming in for you or somebody from the past returning for you doesn't have to be romantic when I say that. I know many of you will go that way, but this can be a friend, a, a family member, whatever, who has big Ludo energy. What do I mean by that? They are extremely sweet. They are completely loyal to you. No matter how you feel about yourself, they are there, right? Ludo friend. <laughs> they may be a person of fewer words than other people, but they choose their words very carefully, right? He doesn't speak very often, but when he does, it's key dialogue. Um, they may be someone who's physically bigger than you, broader than you, who has a bit of an unusual appearance with the horns, who's a bit alternative, something like that. Or if they're not bigger or kind of more bombastic and extrovert, then they have like a bigger energy in the sense that you notice when they walk into a room, right? They're a presence. They're a, um, someone once told me that I have moxie and it reminds me of that kind of vibe. Yeah, it, it's the, um, I'm here, don't worry, <laughs> in a jokey way. It, it's that person that is fairly unmissable. Like you don't, you don't get a sofa with Ludo on it and not see Ludo first, you know what I mean? So, that's sort of how to tell who they might be for you. And you're the Sarah in this picture and she looks absolutely delighted to be in this companionship holding hands with this Ludo figure. What's also true of this card is that there is glitter in the background. So this person could elevate your experience to be one of more of an aesthetic significance. It, being around them may make you feel 
more comfortable to be your true self or more kind of main character energy in the non-toxic way. They may make things feel elevated, magical, romantic. They may be someone for whom strange and magical experiences follow. Um, or when you're with them, weird shit happens in that great way. They're also somebody whose focus is on you. Notice with the Jareth and the Chamberlain, although they claim to be focused on you in their energies, they're actually sort of by themselves. Whereas Ludo here is not looking to the camera, he's looking into Sarah's face. He's really assessing what's been happening for you. How are you? Even with the grabbing of the hands, it's like, how are you doing, darling? I feel like that is the energy of whoever this is, whatever relationship you have to them. This person might also be really connected to nature or to crystals because there's the calling in of the rocks. Um, on that, I was told not to show my Moldavite on here, but I've been working with it. So that might be something you're called to. I was also told to express it through including this Malachite, which has similar purposes for me and other stuff that it does. So we're talking crystals of major transformation, heart chakra stones and stones that are formed in an, a non-typical way. Like how with Moldavite, um, I think you can only get it in the Czech Republic and it, it's like a, a specific kind of meteoric glass that was here before humanity, but is still geologically new, right? Um, I can't remember the formation of Malachite, but I know it's equally kind of a bit unusual and the thing with Malachite as well is that it can be toxic when it's in an elixir and it can be something that you're careful about using when you're pregnant, things like that. But it's also a really beneficial energy. So there's something with this person and their characteristics that is a bit Malachite, that is a bit green, where um, they might come across more poisonous than they are or more I mean he's very big and frightening right and initially the others are scared of him but Sarah knows he's all right so there's something about that dynamic where it's like they come off um maybe more aggressive than they intend to or a bit cold or they might have resting bitch face or something like that but they are the sweetest soul imaginable and I think that they're really going to be supporting you inspiring you for the long term whatever the dynamic is and I think if you're if you're not bringing them in within this particular part of the lunar cycle, you're certainly looking to all of this with them in the centre, right? Knowing that you're going to have that resource so that also you're not acting out of fear. You're not spreading illusion. You're not feeling you have to tell white lies or be a little unkind just a smidge here and there because you know you're supported. You know they have your back, right? No matter what. And that is loyalty, right? It's also tenacity. It's resilience around a person. It's genuine, unconditional love. And for some of you seeing this reading, you've only had conditional or transactional love, even from parents, even from previous partners that you spent long times with. And I think you're ready to step in, in whatever area of life, to having a truly unconditional dynamic where someone can say, if your behaviour is not great, but they will still love you, right? They will still care for you because the care, the care is the undercurrent. It's the, the sort of dark stream that runs under it. It's deeper than everything surface that we're exploring. Now, Nine of Pentacles, um, we've got the nod to this like, be careful of those who don't have your best interests at heart by comparison. Be careful they don't infiltrate onto these two lovely Ludo cards. Because Hoggle is, in the end, the person that gave her up to Jareth, right? Whether that was for a higher purpose or not, this is a person who was her friend and then turned on her. So there's like, keep a weather eye out for that. Just in the sense of leaving those shards on the ground and seeing what glows. Not in the sense of being punitive. Not in the sense of banishing or cutting off or anything like that. Just like, ah, I am aware. My periphery expands to see also the not so great deeds done, right? But with it being the Nine of Cups and with it being reversed, there's also like an extra caution from Universe on the non-connective level of don't overindulge too much at this time. I don't know whether it's with food, with spending. Um, there's just something here that is a bit of a like addiction that is out of control. 
you might indeed want to look into whether the connections that you have had have been related to certain addictions. Are there circles that you move through because you like to eat together and actually food has been a bit of a problem area for you? Sorry to trigger anybody if that's you. Are there circles you move through where other people are doing a bit better financially and you feel pressured to overspend your money in order to be around these people? Because that's not a fair exchange. That's not a baseline of friendship, right? That's not an understanding mutually. And you might have to come clean about some stuff there. For some of you, and it's a minority, are you trapped in a network because of addictions to things like sex or parties or substances, right, that are very much um, an undercurrent element of all of these people that are in this Zoom background world. And in stepping away from your own addictions, is it time to perhaps go into new negotiations with those people? Because remember, we're not letting them go. We're coming into a way to help them. We're coming into a way to help ourselves, to turn on aeroplane mode, to the things that would distract us, would pull us off course, excuse me, and to learn how to emotionally, mentally and physically pace ourselves. Sorry, hiccups again, confirmation. I'm really sorry it manifests that way. Moving down here, um, we've talked about the Skeksis and I don't really want to dwell on this like problem person any more than we have. Frankly, there's going to be less and less readings like that on this channel because I'm I'm done with that energy. Um, and I've, I've kind of got rid of it in my own life to a certain extent. Um, although I'm, I'm sure certain people are watching. <laughs> Hi. Uh, <laughs> there is a sense with the scepter, though, that whoever this was and whatever they got out of it, and for many of you it is money, um, they're going to get that wherever they go. They're looking away from the reading, away from your circumstances. They're taking with them what they came for, in a sense. So don't take any guilt trips too seriously, is what I'm hearing. Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip because that really hurt my throat chakra to say. I'm being pushed to tell you not to communicate that you think that that's what they were after or all they were after. Because this is not... <laughs> Excuse me, throat chakra again. Please can I get it out, universe? This is not about expressing hatefulness again, right? That's why my throat was acting up, because I had to say something else bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're going to go on their way. They're going to have whatever they needed out of it. More to the point, this two of pentacles is again referring back to cyclical rebalancing, to pacing your energy. Please, please, please. I don't care if you're not disabled. I don't care if most of the book doesn't talk about your social life. If you have ever experienced burnout of any kind or think that you ever might, read Pace Yourself by Amy Arthur, not sponsored. <coughs> Are we done? We're done. Sorry about that, guys. Sometimes they really go for it with me. And it doesn't help that I've just been talking for a very long time, having recorded this twice. Um, there's something doppelgangery in that, which again reflects this like looking into the people around you for what is also in you. Um, as I said, you're coming into the crystal chamber, you're meeting your ideal tribe, you're coming into a world of exchange, of true reciprocity with people who can help you help other people and people who will stick by you in a loyal, supportive, um, unanimously positive way. Notice if you're a regular that these cards usually have at least one negative message in them. And in this case, that's, it's not happening, right? There's nothing more to defend against. You have started out on your journey with a weapon in hand because this is the beginning of Jen's trial and you have ended up at the end of the movie in the crystal chamber interacting with new people or new dynamics or taking yourself into new scenarios without the need for defense without the need for uh being armored having your back up right there's no gartham there's no like closing off of self from the external anymore because it's all gone wavy gravy and it's all become a way to understand yourself more deeply i want to reiterate at this point 
the fortune cookie message of good things are being said about you, which I got last night when I uh, bought myself these wonderful flowers and a meal to congratulate myself on good study. <laughs> Hey, I just, I felt like gloating there. I don't know why I included that. Anyway, you may also be someone who needs to celebrate little moments for yourself, even if, um, you know, the, those around you aren't available for celebration at this time or whatever. Like, it might be a thing of, do you only do being kind to yourself when someone's watching you? That's a thing, isn't it? That will hit for some of you. Let me know in the comments if that was for you. Right, so... Coming into tribe, what this might look like, you could encounter new groups on social media, you could be um, entering a meetup group and suddenly, you know, networking with people you've never met before. You could be introduced by a friend to somebody who it turns out will be really useful in the future for your overall mission. Or indeed, you could meet this Ludo person or be pulled by my words to reconnect with this Ludo person because also they could be in this question of like who are you carrying forward they could already be in your um what's the word your kit of like existing friends and tribe and social resources to draw on they could be part of your clan right um and then moving over to this ten of cups you'll notice that jen here is looking towards the orrery so again moving towards the cyclical, understanding that things come in waves, perhaps subscribing if you haven't to see further lunation readings. <laughs> um, but he's also looking to time. He's looking to the astrological. He's looking to the spatial, the way that everything moves in harmony with each other. And the planets somehow miss each other just by fractions, enough to keep doing the same thing, right? Bear in mind that in the orrery, we're not talking like billions of miles, we're talking fractions of an inch, and they still move past and through each other and around each other in a way that is utterly harmonious. Jen is looking to the harmony which has travelled even through the apparent disharmonies in his social and sexual life, right? Also, Ten of Cups speaks about the, the eventual outcome of whatever this reassessment was, whatever this ideal picture looked like for you, whether it's that you want to broaden things or contract them, whether it's that you actually do want a more traditional setup or whether that is definitively your worst nightmare and you've learned that you need to go out there on your own, whatever it is for you it's going to come into fruition. I want to say like the ball for that is going to be rolling by the end of this few days. You may not be like, you know, if if you decided you're more traditional, you may not be married with a, a baby on the way by the end of the week. But what you will be is in the sorts of circles where that becomes more possible for you. If, for example, you were struggling with addictions, toxic people, overindulging, overspending of money and energy, etc, etc, etc. You're going to be putting yourself in the environment, because he's in Augur's chamber, where these things become possible again. And you're going to be looking at the whole reading, at everything that happened in 2023 and will happen in 2024 with a kind of awestruck awareness. Again, I want to reinforce from this first card, the things that are for you will glow. They will pull out to you. Notice, by the way, the colours in this reading that you're drawn to, the moments where there has been a shaft of light or a change in my voice. Notice things about it that are uniquely pulling for you because I will respond to this imagery and this setup in a different way. And there may be additional messaging for you in the nature of what it is that the eye seeks or the ear seeks in this. So it's, it's almost as if like you're stepping into a place where you are understanding your friendships and connections more deeply and you are more appreciative for all facets of them. And therefore you can be a true companion and things are said about you that are positive. But in that process, you are more able to see the way the heavens move or the way that things interact with each other. You're seeing the mechanisms of how this worked on you in the negative. You're seeing the mechanisms of how it is that you came to be in alignment with this Ludo figure, this friendship, this deep connection elsewhere. And you're seeing how easy it is 
when you see everything as acceptable in not in the behavioral sense but in the sense of ah this makes a perfect kind of messaging sense to me this is all good because you know god saw that it was good kind of a vibe when you accept it in that sense rather than struggling against it and trying to change it and trying to banish here and protect there and expunge at this end and all of that sort of shit that we dealt with last year what is for you glows magnificently and it is easy to aim for that thing pick up the correct shard and go on your quest knowing you have exactly what you need at the end of this reading it's about you already having the social resources that you will need for the future and that's not to say that the question about keeping the same group all your life is true. It's to say that this period of the Aquarius new moon and then the crescent moon is a reassessment of everything to come to a place where you feel equipped and at peace. Read Pace Yourself by Amy Arthur. Please like, subscribe, ding the dong, thank you kindly. Hit that bell particularly if you do want to see that extra reading that I came across this morning, which is fantastic. Um, again, not sponsored or affiliated. She's just great. Um, and yeah, uh, comment with what resonated, how it resonated, what you'd like to see on the channel. Um, we will be doing the love transmission soon for last month as well as for this month for singles couples anything in between we'll also be doing the boundary setter try before you buy if you can't afford to book privately with me link in the description um so that you can kind of try out my reading style and see what's for you and get something out of it also i am taking in the comments any requests for any kind of pick a card you want let me know what you want to see and i'll do it it might not be immediate but it will be kind of in the works because i'm being a bit more flexible in 2024 trying to adapt to my audience etc i am a small channel with a big mission you may see if you're seeing this live that i don't have too many subscribers and whilst i'm utterly appreciative of those i do have and i love you all and i enjoy your comments immensely um Please do subscribe if you're not and please do share me to make this a bigger thing because as you can see from the beginning of the description, I've been at this a while, just not on YouTube, right? And I'd like to reach more people and I'd like eventually for this particular reading that you've presumably just enjoyed to um, be something that can be transmitted to somebody years in the future when they need it as well, all right? So... Give me a hand, bit of reciprocity, because that is the theme for you right now. And I really do hope you enjoy indulging in all these wonderful connections you do have and will have. And hopefully I will see you at the first quarter moon.